welcome to another episode of What's New with Nadine, and today we're going to discuss five habits that I implement on a daily basis that I have been practicing for a few years now that I think you can benefit from that will reduce your fear and create a calming effect during a time of crisis that we're experiencing now with the coronavirus. And then of course, at another time in your life that you might have, uh, may, you may be filled with stress. And um, I benefit from them. I'm going to share them with you today. And I hope you will stay tuned. I hope you'll subscribe. And uh, let's get started. Okay, so I got my cheat sheet here because I want to try to stay on task. And we'll go through my goals for 2020 as part of one of my habits. And one of them was to keep my videos under 20 minutes. Okay, so today I wanna to discuss some of these habits that require a lot of discipline um, over time. They become very um, simple and matter of fact, like any habit. What is the old saying? I think it takes uh, 60 days for um, it to become a habit. And so I find that these habits that I practice definitely keep me centered, focused, and disciplined. And so I don't spend a lot of time during the day, <clears throat> excuse me, fretting uh, over the news. Um, I do get my share of news and I do try to filter out what I think um, is uh, benefit, you know, is affecting me personally but I try to stay busy and very productive during the day and I think that's uh, no secret to anyone that um, keeping your mind busy uh, will keep your mental health uh, <laughs> better as well. Okay, so let's get through the, let, let's go through the first two um, because I think they're probably obvious and most of you practice them and that would be number one, diet. So for those of you that subscribe to my channel, I am an intermittent faster. Um, I will link below a couple of my episodes. Um, this coming June will be three years for me. And uh, now Dr. Oz practices intermittent fasting. So you could Google him and go on his YouTube channel and find out all the benefits. And, and I don't wanna waste uh, a lot of time right now going over the benefits of intermittent fasting. But what I can tell you, number one, I'm not worried about right now is gaining weight. And I don't think a lot of people can say that, that if you are stuck inside your home uh, for consecutive days, if you have children, I have family, I'm cooking all the time. And so um, I don't have any fear because that intermittent fasting has created such a disciplined environment for me. Um, my body responds uh, well to this regimen. And so I wanted to show you that when I get up in the morning, I just have an espresso. But here's my lunchbox. <laughs> and, um, in the morning, I sometimes make my lunch and I put it in the refrigerator. And, and why, would, why would I do that if I'm not leaving for work? <laughs> because around 1.30 when I do eat lunch, all I have to do is take it out. It's almost like um, that TV dinner where the calories are already there and it doesn't require any thought. Um, because you all know what it's like to be starved and hungry. You start just shoving food in your mouth. And this way I have it on the ready. Um, what's funny is I brought this with me on vacation last month when we were in Florida. Okay, before those uh, kids arrived from college and oh, made, well, we all watched the news. Anyways, because um, we were in Fort Lauderdale. Um, I, I snuck this in my luggage. Um, I took it every day down to the pool. Um, every time my husband and I went out, I even took with me the ice pack. And I had waters, I had fruit, I had pistachio nuts. I always had this with me. I mean, it's not a genius idea. Um, you know, th there's no reinventing the wheel here. But it does keep you... Um, within whether it's a calorie uh, count that you're trying to maintain or healthy food, it's always packed for me. And if you're curious what's in here today, um, I'll insert a picture of what these are called. Um, they're corn, they're like um, an organic corn chip. I don't, I don't know how else to say it. They're not high in calorie, they're delicious. I have a peach. 
I have dressing that I've made. And then in here, I even pack my Keurigs because I go to my husband's office. <laughs> and I'm, I am a coffee snob. I'm a wine snob and a coffee snob. And here is a kale salad that I had a massage this morning. <laughs> Chickpeas, carrots, uh, cherries. Um, last night's uh, grilled chicken. So everything is here. And so the biggest benefit for me with intermittent fasting is I'm not worried when I'm in the kitchen. I'm not picking when I'm preparing a meal. I've already made um, sauce with meatballs today and chicken parm. And I do a lot of that bigger cooking in the morning because I'm fasting and I'm fasting till 1.30. If I started to cook all of that in the afternoon, then I would be sampling the um, the chicken breast, I'd be eating a meatball, I'd be tasting the sauce. And so when I practice this method, it keeps the temptation at bay. And so before I close on intermittent fasting, I did want to share with you my secret to keeping, I don't have a very big sweet um, tooth, um, but on occasion, I do crave chocolate. Uh, I don't crave like cakes or cookies. I like them, but I don't crave them. This is my secret. Um, this you could of course buy anywhere, Hershey's, uh, this the traditional. This is the cacao powder unsweetened from Trader Joe's. And so at night I make for my husband um, hot cocoa. Now there's no comparing this to that package that you buy that envelope. Um, it's so sweet you don't really taste the chocolate you just taste the sugar and it's the, it's the chocolate we're craving. This, it's not for calories, but it is only 10 calories. Um, I put this in a cup of hot water. Um, I'm trying to find the cacao uh, portion on here. Anyways, um, this is 100% the Hershey's. And what I do is I add two or three of the stevia. And because I don't really use traditional half and half, I put in my uh, Coffee Mate, which is that powder. Um, and then if you want something more decadent, put a little scoop of Cool Whip or a Ready Whip on top. The, the hot cocoa itself is, ends up being like a 20 calorie drink, but it's, it, you savor it. It's so, it's so decadent, you just have to trust me. And, it, and I don't know, it takes me 10, 15 minutes to drink because it's so piping hot. Um, by the time I'm done, that craving is gone. And uh, I don't know, I love it. I've kind of had it every night all, all winter. Okay, so number two, exercise. So we all know that we're stuck indoors. Um, some days like today, I could go out and have my run. For those of you that follow me, I am a runner. But there have been some inclement days. Um, yesterday it snowed. I'm here in Connecticut. Uh, it didn't snow in January or February. <laughs> but here it's snowing the last week of uh, March. Um, so what I did was I just went on my voice remote on my television and I did um, exercise videos on YouTube, right? Everybody can do that. You can pull it up on your laptop, your phone, whatever you'd like. So the first video that came up was a hit uh, high intensity workout from Self Magazine. So I'm like, I run seven miles on a treadmill. I've got this. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I almost couldn't get out of bed the next day. I use muscles that I probably haven't used since high school. Oh my goodness. It was, it was laughable. Um, anyways, I've done that video three times since, and now it's, well, it's not a piece of cake, but I was determined to get through that 30 minutes. Um, and so maintaining um, some semblance of exercise and fresh air is very important um, during a time of um, worry and fear. Um, Nothing like breaking a sweat, whether you're cleaning out your basement, which we did on Sunday and we broke a great sweat, vacuuming, cleaning, uh, for the ladies and men that do the home cleaning. I mean, you, you don't have to do a hit workout in order to break a sweat, but I think it was Mary Lou Henner. I should have brought her book out. I read that many years ago. Her secret to maintaining her great figure was breaking a sweat every day. Um, you could put on a salsa music and dance alone in your bedroom or your living room. Um, but I do think whether it's meditation, yoga, um, it is important right now to maintain a higher standard of diet and exercise. And because I am not on the treadmill and I'm not able to track how much cardiovascular or output I'm putting for calories, um, 
I'm not drinking wine uh, during the week, something I uh, really look forward to because I don't want to put weight on, so we always have to adjust um, accordingly and use common sense. Okay, so my third habit um, that I did adopt also a couple years ago is essential oils. Um, I discovered those on YouTube uh, by one of the women I uh, follow, and she spoke of the many benefits. Uh, you can go on YouTube or Pinterest, Google, and discover uh, the different scents and what each, uh, the property that they um, possess uh, for healing. Um, I wanted to show you, I have a little tray here. I'm running low. Um, some people like floral scents, some like citrus. I like citrus. I like like autumn scents like um, cinnamon, cardamom, um, pumpkin. Um, those are the scents. I don't really like uh, floral with the exception of lavender. I put this on our bed. Every time I change our bed sheets, I put this um, on our bed pillows. I, I just splatter it all over my sheets. You know, I just, you know, it comes out you know, in a millicenter, uh, um, frankincense. Um, I put eucalyptus in the bathroom. Um, I'm going to show you that I have a diffuser. I wanted to see what other scents I have here. Um, I have a lot of orange. I put these down my, um, sink. I have a garbage disposal. Um, so I put this in there after I run that. Um, I could do a whole episode on everything that I use, essential oils, especially because we cook, uh, we're Italians, and so I'm always cooking, the kids are always over, my granddaughter, and now I have a new granddaughter, so I'm always cooking big meals, and then, you know, when you're done cleaning at night, that all of that aroma is still in the kitchen, I don't like that, when you wake up in the morning, it's still there, and so I use the diffusers, um, this is one, I just took the lid off. Um, you fill it with water, you drop in several drops of whatever scent you'd like. And when you wake up in the morning, um, all of those scents uh, and smells are gone. Um, I have one in each bathroom. Um, I turn all of these on in the morning. I turn them on often at night. Um, the benefit to the oils is, is of course they're natural and they have healing properties where candles, uh, which I always also love, I don't burn as often because I have fear. I'm gonna burn the house down. Um, I'm a little more forgetful in my 50s, and so I'm afraid I'll leave the house and forget I have a candle burning. Um, of course, if we're entertaining, I have, you know, all the kids are here, I have a candle on. But read up on the benefits of essential oils. I, I also do put it in my kitchen in my soap dish soap. I don't always have Mrs. Myers. So if I have like a Dawn dish detergent, I open the lid and then I pour uh, several uh, shots of uh, orange or whatever scent uh, is handy. And then every time you use that soap, it emits that smell. And I also use it in my uh, steamer when I steam my floors. Um, I told you I could write a book. Excuse me. It's time for my fast break and so I enjoy my coffee okay so the fourth habit that I think is very very important and I certainly didn't develop it uh, Oprah made it famous and that is journaling and what I wanted to discuss about journaling are the obvious benefits I have one here um, this book is dated all my messy handwriting um, what's great about journaling is whatever is bothering you at night, you know, you lay in bed at night and you're vacillating about how to solve a problem. Um, when I wake up in the morning, I end up purging all of those thoughts, or of course you can do it by, on your bedstand at night. And um, I think it helps put in words uh, and in front of you a perspective of the problem, whether it's the pros, the cons, uh, some solutions, um, some fear. Um, my journaling has been re more recently, um, I titled one of these pages, you know, the coronavirus um, epidemic. Maybe someday my grandchild, uh, great-grandchild will, 
will come across this and read my thoughts on this crisis and how it's affecting um, us. I have on here some goals. Um, I think, you know, journaling isn't for everybody, but I do think that it's, it's very unburdening to put down on paper things that are bothering you. Um, and journaling doesn't always have to be from a stress pers uh, perspective. Um, I have these all over the house. <laughs> They're goals. This one says goals 2020. Um, I wrote this February 1st. A lot of this is about my YouTube channel. Um, but I think it's great to challenge yourself if you have a habit that you find you can improve on if there's something you'd like to implement. Um, I have here that I, you know, to be more focused on my daily calendar, um, to keep my videos to 18 minutes or less. But I think it's very important to constantly doing a self-reflection or a self-evaluation, uh, writing it on a to-do list, writing it in a journal. I have here um, goals. Um, they're about books that I want to read, which is my fifth and final. Um, keeping negative thoughts at bay. I had to highlight that. Um, I think we all succumb to negative thoughts, especially now during the crisis. Uh, we're all trying to keep our fears intact and under control. These are challenges. These are daily concerns that we all have. I'm worried about my two granddaughters staying healthy. And I, and I do think it's healthy to have um, thoughts that run through your head, both positive and negative. But I think if you write them down, write a plan and how to execute um, something that's bothering you and the solution to that, I don't know, it kind of frees up space in your mind for things that maybe are a priority or that are more positive. Um, I married a man that's a optimist. We have a book shelf. Oh, we could have one in every room about positive and motivational uh, books that we have both read that he introduced me to 32 years ago. Um, and I'm a big benefactor of that thinking. Um, it has shaped our life. We always look at everything as half full and not empty and helps us to overcome a lot of problems that we have. And the fifth and final, because I'm approaching minute 17 here, um, and I'll keep it simple, is reading, right? Again, not a new thought or a philosophy, but what I want to suggest um, we always can compartmentalize time during the day um, about um, fiction or, you know, romance and great novels that are um, exciting uh, to read, like a good Netflix movie, right? It has the same appeal, uh, a suspense or a thriller. But what I am suggesting um, is finding a book on something that um, really requires all the receptors in your mind and in your brain to be on full alert. Um, this was recommended, this is called The Courage to Be Disliked. I don't know if the camera can focus. Um, it's from, it's written by Ishiru Kishimi and Fumitaki Koja. Um, they also wrote another book together. Um, I think it's uh, The Courage to Be Happy. Um, this is a Japanese uh, philosophy uh, from a philosopher written during the time of Freud and Jung. And this perspective is how you don't use um, your past experiences to justify any present uh, behavior. Um, it's about self-forgiveness. It's about admitting fault. Um, there, there's so many interesting um, ideas and philosophies in this. Um, people often say, I don't care what other people think. Um, I, I challenge anybody that says that because there, there has to be people in your life that you love and that for whom their opinion matters. Um, so this has 
really required a lot for me to digest and understand and I have to keep rereading the same page a couple times um, but I think the biggest benefit to finding a book that challenges you is it gives you a, um, an intelligent conversation to discuss perhaps with your partner or your children um, it enhances your attitude and your mind and expands your uh, repertoire of vocabulary. I certainly don't have to, you know, encur you, you should be self-encouraged uh, to want to challenge yourself and read a book that's a little bit outside your comfort zone. Um, but I hope when I'm almost done that I will find the secret to achieving real happiness. Um, but I'll report back. And so another book, just to show you that I'm, that all of our time isn't spent in, with our nose in a book that I have to look up sometimes, the vocabulary. Um, here's a great book I read last year, Timeless Beauty, Christy Brinkley. I mean, it's, it's just great. It, she discusses her journey through, of beauty through the modeling industry. Um, it has a beautiful like cookbook. Um, it's all of her tips and tricks. I mean, isn't she our goddess for timeless beauty? Um, and on a final note, I am also discovering the um, idea of the law of attraction. That's something new that I'm really enjoying um, unfolding and unraveling uh, different people's perspectives on the law of attraction. I have, again, Oprah discussed this many times. She discussed um, inspiration boards. I have one here. My granddaughter looks at it every time she comes in. Um, I have a larger one here that has some inspiring posts. And <clears throat> my channel is often about style and tips to be youthful at a um, age uh, of maturity. And I have a lot of suggestions here that I refer back to. Um, but this one, um, in cap, in cap, I can't even say, <laughs> encourages um, what I hope will take place in the future, the near future of local um, anchors that I hope will maybe invite me on their show to discuss my channel. And I am enjoying um, learning about the law of attraction. So, you know, my fifth and final is push yourself outside your comfort zone. Read a book that challenges you. Read on a subject, photography, um, you know, cooking, anything that you feel that you want to know more about. Take the time now during this uh, epidemic, pandemic, this time home um, to say, when we get back to our normal life, I'm so proud of myself. I didn't gain weight. I maintained my exercise. I learned a new um, challenge, uh, whether it is a uh, passion. Um, I wrote an inspiration board. <laughs> um, I got on YouTube every day, listened to TED Talks, and learned about... Um, astronomy, you know, whatever it is that can feed your soul to distract from the news and, and to get, take a step back from Netflix, um, which I enjoy at night as well. But um, I only allow myself that if I've accomplished a few things during the day. Um, so let's come back together in a couple weeks from this crisis and show that we have created a better self. So thank you for watching another episode of What's New with Nadine. I hope that this has inspired you. I hope